Hey, this is Gary. This is Mike. And Daniel. We're not professionals. We're just three addicts sharing our experiences, strength, and hope regarding recovery. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to other addicts and to practice these principles in our lives. Welcome to another episode of the 12th Step Podcast. This is Mike. And this is Gary. And this is Daniel. It is good to be together, although I will say that we're not actually together. Yep. Uh, this tonight, we're, we're seeing firsthand the, uh, the ability of technology. We're uh, on opposite ends of the country right now and, uh, and still having an opportunity to get together and podcast. What an amazing thing. This is the great experiment. Yes, it is. I can't, I can't wait to see how, how uh, Mike can take cues from us without seeing us. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Uh, tonight, our first uh, one of the things we want to address is some emails. Uh, we've had a chance to receive uh, a couple of emails that have come in. The one I wanted to specifically focus on is from it's from Adam, who has uh, who's reached out to us a time or two. So thank you again, Adam, for reaching out. Hello, Adam. Adam is, uh, Adam has uh, brought up a couple of points. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read the email, and then and, and I'll I'll bounce through it just a little bit to get to the meat of what he's asking for. First of all, he said, it's been a while since we spoke, and I love you guys. Uh, I love the fact that you're expanding more through social media, YouTube. Uh, YouTube, you guys should write a book someday. Uh, shout out to everybody who's finding us on YouTube and to all the other social media platforms that we have out there, Facebook uh, and, and other things like that. He says, I'm, uh, I'm writing because I'm wondering how you found your therapist. That's the first question. And then uh, uh, what are some things that made you feel like he was a perfect fit? That's the first question. And then he goes on to say, I'm trying to find a therapist, but honestly, it's challenging because they don't have any knowledge of sex addiction or really seem to know how to guide the conversation around sex addiction. They just ask if I've looked at porn this week, and if not, then let's just move on. And I'll, uh, I'll end it with that. So two, two really important issues there, how we found our particular therapist and then what advice we'd have for him and he is. Um, any thoughts on that immediately? Well, I suppose if you wanted me to answer the question, how did I find Shane? Um, I don't know. I mean, my, my answer to that question is easy. Gary. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, and, and then Mike, I know that, that, uh, that, uh, you've known him for a while outside of, of therapy stuff, but I, I, let's see, I was in the hospital and I had a therapist, a whole group of therapists and things like that. And I was working with a guy when I came out and was doing some outpatient stuff. And I believe Shane was recommended. My wife was seeing a therapist and he recommended Shane. And so then I went and, and saw Shane. That's how I found him. It was a recommendation. But, you know, I... I a, I'm just going to interject there. You're right. I do have a relationship with Shane that exists, uh, that has been around for 30 years that... He happens to be a close friend to a sibling of mine, and uh, uh, and so just peripherally, I've known of him as family events have gathered, things like that. Uh, but mine's really kind of interesting in the sense that I knew roughly what he did. Uh, he shared very early on in his professional career. I remember multiple conversations about the fact that he was working in inpatient therapy in. Uh, I'm trying to think of the words he specifically used. It's uh, it wasn't addiction. It was uh, um, sexual predators. Sexual. Uh, these were. This was a. This was a lockdown facility of, mm -hmm. of sexual of use, as I recall. And he was a. He was an in uh, inpatient counselor at that facility. And so, I just knew that he was out there. I don't know that I ever knew that he had left that facility. And so, when my world was kind of collapsing around me and things were falling apart, and I. I didn't know who to call. I, I, I'm very much like Adam in the sense of who in the world do I deal Who do I call? How do I get help? And, and I had that thought. I literally just had that thought of, hey, I know that he's in this space. Maybe he could point me to somebody. And that's when I reached out to him by email. So that's how I, uh, that's how I got connected with him. Nice. Um, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Gary. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Like I said. You're just going to be a master at seeing all these <laughs> cues. Yes. I mean, as far as the second question, you know, did is, did we go to therapy before? I mean, I definitely did. Uh, I saw multiple therapists um, prior to that. 
to try to help with this. And, you know, I found similar results, you know, like he's talking about where they just asked, did you look at it? It was a yes or no. And if I did, it's like, well, let's try a couple things. And then it was, it was very brief. It wasn't really the focus, mm-hmm. um, which is one of the things that I really appreciated when I went in and met with Shane is the whole, every question, everything around what he was doing was focused on that particular thing. Mm-hmm. So going to see a CSAT trained therapist uh, is very important. Now, um, in the beginning, Shane really didn't have those credentials. Yeah, let's, he, he, had, he had a lot of work with uh, offenders and, and sex addiction, and he had some specific training. And actually, he was recommended to me as one of the best in the area. Mm-hmm. But in the 10, 10 and a half years that I've worked with him, I've seen, I've seen uh, his style grow. Much to his credit, he's yes. decided to stay current and continue to get training and things like that. And there's a little bit of a... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your second question uh, with this story. Uh, you said... Da, 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 da. Did you feel like he was a perfect fit? Um, do you know what he he got started? You know, uh, and I said we got started and we went through the the sage one. We went through uh, that first book, and then I found out that it was a part of a series. And I looked at him and I said, I want to do all of these books. You know, mm-hmm. uh, how do we make this happen? And he was willing to facilitate it and put together a syllabus for it, and so. He started doing that, and I, well, okay, I'll be honest. I bullied a couple of the other guys that, <laughs> that was in some previous groups and, and stuff that I was mentoring that they were going to do this with me, and that's how that's how he started doing the Sage 2 stuff, and then and then, then that just led to all kinds of stuff. So um, I would say that when, you're, when you've got a therapist, you need to find – I think the most important thing is you've got to be able to trust this person. Yeah. You've got to be completely honest with them, and I think – I think if you can be completely honest about what you're dealing with this with this person, that's the first and biggest hurdle you can overcome. You can find different tools that will work, but you have to be honest with them. And Shane uh, accommodated a lot of the things I needed, and as a result, his his practice has grown quite a. And I'm not taking any credit for that. I'm just saying that he he followed through and got training and got the CSET training and ITAP training and things like that, and is greatly. Yeah, that's good stuff. It is. I'm going to add something to that. The question about a perfect fit. Uh, though I've known Shane for uh, you know 30 plus years, that relationship uh, very intermitt- intermittently. Um, when I first walked into his office, I don't know that I considered him a perfect fit. No. Uh, no. And I want to be. I want to be clear about that. But uh, you know, the difficult part about this disease is is is, is that. Uh, um, you need a therapist who's going to be strong and bold enough to uh, to help you move the needle. And quite honestly, we're we're pretty good as addicts at as navigating uh, around difficult things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, and so to say that he was a perfect fit, uh, even with that thirty year plus relationship, he he said some things that were painful and that were hard for me to take. And uh, and the question was always, would Mike come back after the things that I've said to him? And so I, I don't think I would identify my early on conversations with Shane as being perfect. What I would what I would say is that we grew into a perfect situation. Agreed. We grew into a perfect relationship. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's a yeah. There, there's a kind of working relationship there. And I, I coined the phrase. I looked at him one day in a in a group session. I said. You're the perfect blend of a gentle healer and a sadistic bastard. And and I I think and I meant it as a compliment, but I, I think that that uh, the therapist also has to be willing to push you and know when to push you and challenge exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. So you are going to have uncomfortable conversations and they need to be. There has to be a, a some hard conversations because you gotta you gotta deal with some hard truths. Well, yeah, and, you know, especially in my situation, if, you know, it, this kind of like, I, I find this even in my relationship with my kids. So if you kind of allow them to push the boundaries and skirt away from the subject, they will. And mm-hmm. they'll keep doing that over and over and over. And addicts are slippery. Yeah, and we are. And so that is the one thing that I did appreciate about Shane is he wouldn't allow me mm-hmm. to skirt that or slip past that. He would, you know, he would like hone in on that. He may let me run a little bit. 
but then he, you know, he's like, nope, we got to circle back. Mm-hmm. We're not getting away from this. We got to focus in on this. Uh, so you definitely need someone to, to to push when you need to be pushed, but at the same time be gentle and loving in those moments when you need to. Uh, one thing, um, you know, before we, we jumped online, I looked up a couple places. Uh, you can look up uh, CSAT trained therapists on ITAP, which is actually spelled I i t a p dot com. Uh, you can look up any uh, CSAT certified sex addiction therapist in your area. The there is another location where it's find dash a dash therapist dot com. You just select CSAT as an option, and it again will allow you to find any uh, CSAT therapist in your area. So if you are struggling to find someone that can help you, and that there are two resources right there that will help you, and then you know. You'd have to narrow it down to see if they care, you know, take your insurance or mm-hmm. whatever. I've also found, I also did a little bit of research before we got on, and I found a couple resources too. In the back of uh, the uh, Recovery Zone books, they have all kinds of great information. One of them that looks particularly good is called sexhelp.com, S E X H E L P.com. And it looks like that there's all kinds of resources on there to help ascertain. If you are an addict or if you are uh, the partner of a sex addict or how to identify problems with your children or teens, there's all there's a whole section for frequently asked questions and then tools to help you find a therapist. So there are definitely resources out there to help you find a therapist. And if you're working with a therapist right now that you trust and can work with, um, you can get some of this. Uh, you can like what I did, you can get the material and say, Hey, can you work with me through this? That's also an option. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a couple of things that, uh, that are coming out of this conversation that are relevant to uh, finding somebody who is trained in this particular specialty is critical. And here's why uh, I, I think you hit it right on the head, Adam. And that is, is that, you know, to have a therapist simply say, Hey, have you looked at porn today? Uh, no, if the answer to that's no, well then obviously we're moving in the right direction and move on. The fact of the matter is, is the, as we've talked about in some of our other episodes, and, and clearly as Patrick Carnes has pointed out, that this is a disease of escape. So simply because you haven't looked at pornography doesn't mean that the universe of the universe of sexual addiction that you may have experienced or may be experiencing uh, is gone away. That, that's just not it. That, that, that just simply isn't it. And so to have a, a counselor who is just glossing over those particular issues may not be helpful. So... Uh, you're looking to find out the reasons, uh, the reasons of which you're trying to escape. What is it that's going on in your life that's forcing you? Because you have developed some habits, you have developed some some methodologies to avoid things that are difficult, and so uh, you need you need a counselor to unpack all of that. That's not something that you can just simply do on your own. And uh, and the outlet for each one of us to be a sex addict is is the use of sex it's a compulsive behavior that, that goes along with sex and so the point being is is that uh, getting the help you need is critical and and it's not helpful to have somebody who isn't trained in this particular area so so unless they're willing as, as Gary has pointed out to go through the work with you and wise enough to walk through that to say yeah this is this is deeper than maybe I first gave uh, mm-hmm. a thought to and uh, as I work through that with this individual I can see that there's a whole lot more here and these are the areas that we need to focus on. I can tell you right now there are a lot of people walking the street who are sex addicts but probably haven't looked at pornography in a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And so that that barometer may not be accurate in your world. Yeah. It's important to find it's important to find somebody who can unpack what is irrelevant in your world. Right, the idea of a dry drunk, right? That's right. That's exactly right. So anyway, that's the that's part of the reason why it's relevant to find somebody who is trained and specializes in this particular thing, because otherwise you may be just spinning your wheels, spending money and not getting the actual help that you need to, to overcome this particular problem. Mm-hmm. So it's a great question. I think uh, I think he's hit some things here that are that are very, very, uh, uh, very, very important. Any other thoughts for Adam? Um, Daniel, you have any other thoughts? The moment I'm rereading through his email. Yeah, I was doing the same thing. To get some ideas. Do you know what you mentioned? You mentioned at the very end of your email, and I don't know if we shared this or not, that that uh, 
you feel like that the lack of homework or resources was a problem. And do you know what? Uh, navigating a navigating something like this, there should be some homework. Yeah. And there should be a lot of we'll call them extracurricular resources that you're taking advantage of. Well, and something else I would also maybe suggest to Adam that it doesn't really he hasn't really hinted at it, but find a twelve step group. Um, go through that, start working through the, the 12 steps that will definitely give you some direction, some homework mm-hmm. to do. Uh, even if you're not able to find a therapist right now, you know, you can at least work on your step one, step two, three and four work. Mm-hmm. And, so and on. maybe while you're looking or developing a relationship with a therapist that's specific to this kind of stuff, if you're, if you're heavily involved in a 12 step group and you're working your steps and you have a, a good sponsor, um, you can even take some of that work into your therapist, and they yeah. can be really helpful uh, helping you navigate some of those. Well, and even that twelve-step group might be a resource of you know, yeah. hey, who, who's a local therapist you guys are working with? Right, and they can direct you because they're going to know better than we will. I'm going to interject here for just a second. I had a fun experience here a couple of weeks ago mentoring a uh, the start of a Sage One group. And uh, somebody in the group piped up. They said, you know, I'm sick and tired of people saying, do the work necessary to find the peace that recovery can bring. And I said, wow, that's funny. I know that jerk. I know the person who said that. (laughs) (laughs) And because he said, what is this work that everybody keeps referring to? And so I had a chance to then enumerate and elaborate on the work. And I think you're hitting right on all cylinders as we're talking about Adam's circumstance that you need to find a counselor that's going to require something of you, some amount of work, because this is not a uh, this is not a passive experience. Recovery just doesn't just doesn't distill it just doesn't uh, distill on us like the mm-hmm. dues from heaven kind of a thing, right? We don't wake up one morning, go to bed one night an addict, and wake up the next morning not an addict. It just doesn't happen that way. There's work involved. Yeah, and so yeah. the kind of counselor who who uh, um, that simply allows you to just meet with them and check in, if you will, is not the kind of counselor that you need because there is some amount of work to be involved. And so uh, uh, the things that you're all talking about, 12-step program, being involved with working the 12 steps, uh, getting involved, every one of the pieces of literature that we've recommended in any of our podcasts are all workbooks. They're all work-related mm-hmm. kinds of things. There's nothing that uh, in this space that's written that just says, hey, if you just read this or take this pill, you're going to be better. There's work involved. Mm-hmm. And so you need a counselor that, uh, that drives that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like an exercise. You know, you ex- you know, if you want to lose weight, you have to exercise daily. You know, you have to set a certain amount of time. And your brain is a muscle. It's no different than any other muscle in your body. And you have to work at that day in, day out. Mm-hmm. You know, even if it's five minutes today, you know, just doing – a little bit of homework or writing in your gratitude journal or working on your step one, you know, you definitely want more time than five minutes, but that's still five more minutes than what you were doing before. Um, right. I mean, our entire lives, we've been pretty much exercising or training ourselves to be in our addiction. And so we have to do just as be just as forceful or just as committed to doing the opposite type of work to retrain our, our brains to get away from this. Yeah. In, in fact, a really, really good way to think of it is, is you can think of a, a really good therapist as a great coach. Yeah. You know, you can go, you can go have strategy sessions with your coach mm-hmm. and you can talk the game and you can learn all kinds of stuff. But if you don't go out and actually practice and yeah. play the game, if you will, it's not going to, I mean, you'll learn a lot of theory and you, and you'll get some stuff that might be helpful but it's it's not going to it's or not going to materialize in your or, or you're you're training in the wrong way yeah which is causing more damage you know that that coach that trainer will help you to do it the right way so that it's mm-hmm. more efficient and more effective I think that's good stuff in fact I think he uh, at the end of his at the end of his of Adam's email and I'll just finish that most of the time it doesn't seem like a structured conversation around my struggles. Or what I'm facing, but a but a random conversation with no insights, homework, or even resources. Yeah, I think that's uh, uh, again, it's critical to have somebody who's in your corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I I would never bemoan anybody within the profession. I just simply wouldn't. Anybody who's who's working these particular things, but but having somebody who understands your unique circumstance is really relevant. Yes. Uh, and that's just that's just the way it is. And then finding somebody again who's willing to push you to levels that you yourself just like just as you mentioned, a good coach, right? I mean, uh, 
it's uh, anybody who's played sports, a good coach makes all the difference in the world, right? But but they're demanding. They mm-hmm. ask. They they want something from us. Yeah, and they're going to demand our very best and our very best effort. And and one of the things I'd also advise Adam, you know, and this is something that Shane constantly pushed with me. Yeah, you know, he's like, you're in the you're in the control seat when you're in here. It's not me, you know. And so I would advise Adam to speak up and say, hey, this isn't working for me. You know, this just routine check-in, I need some help. And I mm-hmm. need to know if you're the person that can help me with this, that can give me more than what I'm getting. Yeah, don't don't forget, you hired them. Yeah. You're paying them to do a service for you. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're an expert, but they're still technically your employee. Yeah, I mean, you can't boss them around, but yeah, like you said, you've hired them to do a service for you. Mm-hmm. And you get to say and have some control on that. I mean, you're not... I, that was one of the uh, key thing with Shane that he kept pushing with me, and mm-hmm. I because I just like no, he's the expert. But once I got that concept that I get to drive the conversation, I get to drive mm-hmm. the direction we're going in, things just dramatically shifted. Oh yeah, yeah, they love it. They love it actually when you start getting it. And yeah. Anyway, so that's one thing I, I would suggest that. to Adam. I would also, Adam, if I, if it were me, I, I think one of the things I would recommend is that you shop to find the right, you know, to find the right fit for you. This is, I, I often, I often indicate that professional services are an awful lot like buying shoes, right? You, you shop and shop and shop. You find four or five different pairs of shoes that may work. You take them off the shelf. You have this, the salesperson bring them to you and you try them on. And, and though they were beautiful on the shelf, you pull them on and think, man, that is just not it. That one is definitely not a fit. That's not going to work for me. Uh, and you put it back on the shelf like, gee, that's too bad because I really like that shoe, but it's not going to work. I think it's the same way in picking professional services like a therapist, right? I would go visit some of these therapists and find out exactly what their credentials are in this space and listen to them. Have Listen to them uh, tell you what it is that they know about this particular area and then uh, and make a choice based on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can, I don't think it's – go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off there. What was that? No, I was trying to cut you off. No, <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, it's also it's also appropriate to say, um, have you helped people through this? What kind of success have they had? Yeah. And what kind of resources do you bring to the table? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you work with some 12-step organizations? Would you recommend that I participate in 12 steps, and where would you send me if I did? All of those sorts of questions are on the, – they should all be on the table. Um, and did, do they have somebody else in their shop that specializes specifically in that? Uh, you know, in Shane's particular circumstances, there are multiple counselors that work there, but only one, only one who addresses this particular topic specifically. And I think that's relevant. I think that's mm-hmm. important. That really is relevant stuff. I don't know that I'd be interested in talking to somebody who who is a you know uh, a practitioner in every aspect of counseling. I just don't know that that would be in my circumstance. I don't know that would have been helpful for me. Yeah. I mean, I agree. It probably isn't, but you know, maybe this person is new, you know, that he's the therapist they're seeing. Maybe the therapist is trying to gently move into that area mm-hmm. and doesn't know that he's ready. So that's where speaking up a little bit, you know, being a little forthright might help. And, you know, and if they have the conversation of uh, simply like, yeah, I need more. They could, you know, mm-hmm. That therapist can say, you're right, I'm not the right person for this. Right. Let me look, see if there, I can recommend someone that is better. And yeah. you know what? I've, and, and like I told you, I had some therapists that I worked with when I was in the, when the hospital, and they, they did a great job. And they took me as far as they could take me. And I'm very grateful for that. And then I needed to go find whatever the next, the next, next level, level was. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, like with Shane, I said, you know, you're familiar with this material. There's additional material. Are you willing to go there with me? Mm-hmm. You know, and he said, yeah, absolutely. So sometimes, sometimes you've got to, you know, I think I'll go back to the first thing that I said, you know, you need to find somebody that you can trust and that you can talk to. Okay. That's really, really important. And that will take you a certain, that will take you a certain distance. And I would even say that that's better than nothing you know, having somebody to, to work with and, and be accountable to, but it will only take you so far. And then so, but if you can find somebody who can not only meet your needs, but is willing to go to the next level with you as you work through this stuff, that's fantastic. You know, I think you hit something that's really important as well, uh, Gary. And that is, is that 
that is is that this counselor may take you so far but don't be afraid to make a change to the next counselor right uh, because that's that's really in a lot of ways as your recovery starts to mature and starts to move forward uh, you may find that that you've outgrown the specific needs of this particular counselor that this is as far as it's at. In fact, I'm finding myself to some extent in that very situation. I had a, a counselor here just recently uh, who reached out to me, who's a marriage counselor of mine uh, that, that I, my wife and I see, who also has an addictive addiction group. And I, I think he reached out to Shane and said, hey, what do you think of and uh, of Mike joining our group? And, and Shane was very complimentary and saying, you know what? Mike's been through all of our SAGE material here. And the idea of him having a, a different perspective on things would be great. And I think the counselors that you work with would probably want that. Mm -hmm. They want what's best for their people, right? And so I'm in that very same situation saying, hey, wow, I'm in this spot right now where uh, I may have an opportunity to, 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 to move on to something else because seeing it – because I've been with this one for a period of time and and, and it's starting to – I'm starting to see things that are important, but but probably not experiencing the growth at the rapid rate that I would like to be, and a different perspective would provide. Mm -hmm. So Daniel just, just found out that we can hang up on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, again, we're we're ex <laughs> we're this is our first uh, chance with technology, and we're taking it to the next level. Yeah, uh, well, a, a call was ringing into my phone, and I tapped the screen so it would go away, and it hung up on mic. Nice. <laughs> the joys of technology. Well, to bring that it is fantastic. To, to, I have a better way to control mic now. I know. I was just thinking. <laughs> this just gets better. And I don't better. need to mute him anymore. Oh. No, just kidding. Just kidding. But let me let me bring it around. Yes. And maybe this is maybe this is a good closing. Maybe thought. this and is Mike, the way. Of Mike, if you if you have a the universe you know was what the, you trying know what the, yeah. to bring some levity into this heavy subject. I know. Did, did you have a back half to that last <laughs> sentence? Do you remember what it was? No. All right. <laughs> Not now. Not now. <clears throat> completely eliminated it from my mind. So we were talking about uh, your therapist being able to take you to the next level, and then you were talking about how you have a therapist who, your marriage counselor, who wants to involve you in some yeah. of these other groups and things like that. The, something I think the point was is that the, the bottom line of it was is isn't it great that your counselors have your best interest in mind and want yeah. to move you along to yeah. to get you to the place where they think is the best suited for you. Now, I think of, uh, maybe we're just probably just about out of time. Yeah, we are. I, ha I have one last thought. Remember, ultimately, you want to get to the point where you don't need the counselor anymore. Yes. You know, you don't want to be. You don't want to be. Well, for lack of a better term, you don't want to become addicted to them, or you don't want. You know they're they're teaching you to fly. They they're not to become a crutch in your life. So, ideally, eventually, the nature of that relationship is going to change, and you'll have to say goodbye to your therapist mm -hmm. and hello to a friend. Yeah. And well, eventually, you want them to be like you know your your oil mechanic, you right? Know? It's you just check in with them for routine maintenance yeah. every now and yeah. then. Um, you know, and that's I remember I was going two to three times a week to mm -hmm. see Shane. And now it's just when I need it. You yeah. Know, if I'm feeling I, like there's just a little too much going on and I need some to talk through it and mm -hmm. need a little bit different perspective, that's when I go in. Yep, exactly right. But in the beginning, yeah, you're definitely probably going to lean on them a lot sure. until you can get your feet under you, get the tools in place, and then you know find your wings. Yeah. But like I said, I don't feel don't feel bad about leaving counselors when they've done everything they can do for you because ultimately that's the goal yes yes it is yeah that's, i think that's a great point and thank you for bringing that up mike you want to bring us home i do i do first of all thank you again adam for reaching out to us i think uh uh the question was absolutely perfect and and i appreciate you uh reaching out to us through the mediums and, and continually reaching out to us so that's been fantastic. Uh, never mind the fact that these guys hung up on me. Don't let that don't let that interrupt the message that was was there tonight. So with that, this is Mike saying, "Do the work necessary to find the peace that recovery can bring." And this is Gary saying, "Do the next right thing." And this is Daniel saying, "Find the hope, or no, not the hope, the humility in your recovery." There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like this episode. 
please give us a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you find us. As a fellowship of recovering addicts, Sex Addicts Anonymous offers a message of hope to anyone who suffers from sex addiction. Check out saa-recovery.org.